Document accessibility in online college courses is crucial for ensuring that all students, regardless of disabilities or learning challenges, have equal access to educational materials. Accessible documents enhance learning by providing alternative formats, such as screen reader compatibility for visually impaired students or captions for those with hearing impairments. This fosters an inclusive learning environment, promotes academic success, and complies with legal requirements like the Americans with Disabilities Act, which mandates equal access to education for all students. Prioritizing accessibility also helps create a more diverse and supportive online learning community. Using the Quality Matters Standard 8 as your guide, you can make your online course accessible by just following a couple of these simple steps. Using appropriate colors and fonts in online courses is essential for promoting accessibility as it ensures readability and reduces strain for students with visual impairments or learning disabilities. High contrast between text and background along with simple sans serif fonts make materials easier to read for everyone. Graphics, when used thoughtfully, can enhance instructional materials by providing visual support for key concepts. However, they should be used sparingly and with purpose to avoid causing distractions and overwhelming your learners. Proper use of accessible colors, fonts, and graphics help create a clear, engaging, and inclusive learning experience for all students. To ensure accessibility when formatting documents in a word processor, such as Word, it's important to use built-in features like headings, lists, and styles rather than manually adjusting text size or formatting. Later on in this presentation, I'll show you how you can do just that. Proper use of heading styles helps screen readers navigate the document. This makes it easier for visually impaired users to understand the structure. Here is an example of a screen reader reading a properly formatted document. 23 headings, 21 links. Example of good accessibility. Heading 1. College of Education and Health Professions. Course Syllabus. Heading 2. Course Description. Heading 3. Prerequisite. Heading 2. Required materials. Just like how you would scan a textbook to quickly get to the information you need, somebody with a screen reader wants to do that same thing, and what they do is tab through the headings. If your headings weren't properly formatted, they wouldn't be able to quickly scan through the document to get the information they need. This example will show a user browsing a poorly formatted document. Example of bad accessibility. College of Education. No headings. No headings. Link HTTP support.blackboardcollaborate.com slash ix slash support slash default dot accepted equals 8336 and You notice how the screen reader is reading out that URL the long way, you know, including every single thing that's in that URL. There are ways to show hyperlinks in a document properly. And you also notice how that screen reader could not find headings and subheadings, so the user was not able to tab quickly to the information that they need. This is why it's crucial to properly format your document. So let's take a look at this example document. This is what I would call my title. And right now it's not a properly formatted title, it's just bolded in 10.5 font. Next, you want to find the style section of your word processor, and this will look different on depending on the type of word processor you use, be it Microsoft Word or Google Word Docs, or even something like PowerPoint. They all have a style section. You all find that differently. And this is also different depending if you have a Mac or a PC version. So I would call this my title. And that's a huge, huge font. Maybe I don't want my document to have this huge title. You can modify any of your, your text formats to match how you, the design that you want. So I'll go to modify style and maybe I want it to be 18 and I want it to be like a dark blue and bold. Um, okay, so I'll modify mine to look like that. So that is a properly formatted title and I would call this a subtitle and I'll just click that. And maybe that's a little big. I don't, I'll go ahead and modify that. Let's go ahead and make that 14. Just a little bit smaller. Okay, and this, I want to make this my body. So that's just gonna be normal, normal text. 
So as far as this document is, it's properly formatted up to this level right here. We have a title, a subtitle, and then the body text. Your Word document will have a number of different hierarchies, heading one, heading two, heading three. So make sure if you're gonna use multiple headings to use them in the proper order so that they can tab through the document with their screen reader and get to the information quickly. Now I'm going to jump over to this PowerPoint. See this, this text? I'm gonna select it. Whoa, I'm not able to select that text. That's because it's simply a screenshot of text and you wanna avoid doing that. When you have an image that's just text, well, that's just going to show up as an image in the screen reader, and it's not going to be able to read out the information that's in this text. So make sure you type that out manually. Um, don't show screenshots of walls of text. Now let's look at hyperlinks. When you have a hyperlink, the link text needs to make sense out of context. Remember our example? Link HTTP support.blackboardcollaborate.com slash x slash support slash default. Okay, I think you get that. You don't want to have a link that's just all the URL because it'll be read out by the screen reader. So what you can do is create a hyperlink and then in that address for the text to display, simply write out what the link goes to. In this case, professional development repository. So that link will be read out link professional development repository instead of just that long URL. You also want to maintain the standard that link text is underlined in a different color than the main text. So let's look at this example. Right here it says the learning management system specialist and that's blue and underlined, but that's not a hyperlink. That was simply underlined in colors change to draw it out of the text, but that's not the proper way to do that. That looks more like a hyperlink. Remember, we made our hyperlink. That is blue and underlined. So if it's not a hyperlink, don't make it blue and underlined. And when you're writing out hyperlinks, make sure you make usable link text, like the side on the right. Avoid things like on the side on the left that say click here or here or read more or register because the screen reader will simply read hyperlink register, but it should say register for accessibility 101. When creating lists, it's easy. Just use your Word document's bullet function instead of using things like dashes. Okay, let's take a look at this Word document. This is a properly formatted bulleted list. This one is not. It's using little dashes to show each one of its section parts. But you'll notice that there are some formatting issues, the text is not properly aligned, and it just does not look right. So, you know, instead of using dashes or any other kind of symbols, just select it and use your uh, bulleted list or your numeral list on your um, word processing software. And then it will be properly formatted. Now take a look at that red and green bullet list up above. You might not know what red and green is. You might have color blindness. So what I just said would not be very accessible. You want to avoid calling things out due to its color, like key responsibility. Major responsibilities are in red, minor are in green. A person who's colorblind would not be able to differentiate these two different colors. So they will be missing out on key elements of that document. So here are some do's and don'ts when it comes to formatting your document using tables. What you want to do is designate column or header rows. So each one of these have a header, one, two, and three, and those are selected and then formatted properly, just like in your Word document or your PowerPoint by using the header, title, subheader function. You also want to repeat your rows and you do not want to merge or split table cells. For instance, this row right here was combined. These two rows were made into one header that covers each one of these, but a screen reader would not be able to convey that information properly. So use that same header for each one of these. For instance, here, these are the same header and it covers both of those table rows. And it does that here, 
but in this way, a screen reader would not be able to properly read that. So you want to use that. Repeat those header rows. And in some cases, you want to add alt text to your tables. But that's a whole nother video, which I will link to at the end of this video. Jumping back to our sample Word document. Ooh, look at this. This is light gray text on a dark gray text background. That is an example of poor contrast. That would be very hard to read for somebody who is trying to read this document. One final thing you want to do is in your courses, you want to not just provide a Word document to your students, you want to provide a PDF version as well. PDFs are readable on nearly all devices where there are some mobile devices that will not be able to read a Word document or read a Word document correctly because it's the wrong version. So make sure you have a PDF copy of any document you want to pass out in your course. And that's simple. You just go to your save and find PDF. And if you just follow all of these best practices, you will have very nice accessible documents in your online courses. So now let's take a look at alt tags. There will be a link to our alt tag video in the description below, or you can simply click this thumbnail on the screen right now.